Hello everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 uh, Tech Thursday. Uh, my name is Brad Tallis. I'm from Autodesk and this is going to be a multi-part series. Um, I've, I've seen some requests where people are like, okay, you show us how to create brackets and flagpole mounts and cardboard boxes and all that kind of stuff, but what about, what about like an actual product? So I went looking around and found something that wasn't overly complicated. Um, it's one of these, I actually had one of these um, in my front yard during Christmas, but it's one of those laser light uh, projector kind of a things. And I was thinking, you know, this is a pretty cool product. It's got some, some neat Fusion-esque type features on it, like patterns and fillets. And then what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to manufacture all of these parts. And you'll notice it even has like a circuit board. It's got those lasers in there. I don't know if you can kind of see them. Um, some wiring, um, a lot of plastic parts, some injection molded parts. And so I was thinking, you know, this might be a kind of a fun... Uh, multi-series project. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, I've got my friend Aaron on the uh, chat, so if you have any questions or comments, he'll be uh, helping me out today. I've also included the drawings um, in the description of the video. And uh, we're only going to do uh, two parts today, so I only have two drawings so far. Um, this uh, series is going to be um, interjected with some other series. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Um, as you saw last week, there was an excellent live stream on the new electronic design uh, that's added into Fusion. And we're going to do a couple more of those throughout the month also. And we're going to use it on this project. So here's kind of like what we're going to be doing. Um, and again, this thing isn't totally finished yet, but what we're going to be working on today is creating um, the stake and the pivot mount on this particular design. Um, later on we're going to learn more about like you know how would you go about designing this plastic part and shelling it out etc. We're going to learn about reusing existing geometry to help us design the next part. Um, we're going to learn some tips and tricks and some shortcuts which I know all of you really like. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So I am using these drawings. Um, and again, they are linked in the description of this video. Um, and so I'm just gonna be referencing these. So the first thing I do um, as I take a look at a drawing is I'm gonna be like, what makes the most sense? And I like to break it down into its simplest form. So obviously we've got kind of a circular shape here and it's patterned or you can see there's multiple little support ribs here. We've got this bottom stake part that's slightly tapered. You can kind of see that here, 91 degrees. You'll notice I've added a comment that we're going to add a very small fillet to all of the edges when complete except for the thread. So you're going to learn some tips and tricks on that. Um, this is in inches. Uh, I know all of my uh, metric people are going to yell at me, but <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and, and jump right in. So one of the first things I want to do is make sure that my units are correct. So I expand open next to this little document settings gear and uh, I, I show that we are in inches. I like to do everything in components. And with this particular design, this is gonna be really important. And so again, I'm gonna emphasize, I recommend doing components for everything that you design because it keeps track of your sketches, your bodies, your timeline is much easier to see. Um, and I just find it so much easier to manage, you know, more complex assembly. So I'm gonna create a new component I'm just going to call it steak for now. And so you can see that I have this new component and it's active. The next thing I like to do is I like to hit save. And the reason for that is it's going to allow me to save it and it's going to start my auto save. So auto save doesn't start saving until you've saved it for the first time. And then it's going to auto save in the background. Um, so I'm just going to give this a name. I'll just call it steak part and you'll see that that will go from untitled to stake part, okay? 
and now it says version one. So now my autosave has kicked in. So another little tip that might help you out in the long run. Okay, I'm gonna start again with the, the basic shape. So create a sketch, I'll throw it on my top plane. I'll use the circle or the C on my keyboard for circle. And according to the drawing, this is a 1.5 in diameter. So I'll go ahead and do that. And that's pretty much it. I'll say finish sketch. Now here's another tip. I don't know if a lot of you know about this, but I could hit finish sketch and it'll exit out of my sketch environment. It'll put me into my 3D environment. Well, even inside my 2D environment, I can just click on my profile right mouse click and it shows me the commands that make sense and one of them is extrude. So I'm going to go ahead and say extrude and you'll notice that it basically finished my sketch for me. So it just kind of saves an extra little step. Okay. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to jump back and forth to the drawing too much, but I'm just referencing my drawing here so I'm extruding this shape up uh, 0.1 according to the drawing. And I'll say okay, and this will make more sense as we, we go along. Okay, so what I just basically did is I just drew this bottom disc right here. It's 1.5 in diameter, and you can see that they're 0.1 thick. Now I want to basically pattern that. Um, I could do copy and paste, but I like to use pattern because maybe I'll come back and want to change the spacing or change the quantity. So you can see that it says it's 0.675 for the spacing. So I'll come in here and say create pattern. And you'll notice we have three different kinds. We have rectangular pattern, circular, or pattern on a path. I could do a pattern on a path, um, or I could even do rectangular. And you're like, well, it's not rectangular. It's in a straight line. Well, you'll see that you don't have to do it in a full rectangle. You can actually do it in a linear direction. Okay, the important thing is you'll notice under pattern type, you have different options, faces, bodies, features, and components. Now, this is where it can get a little bit confusing. What's the best method? Which way should I do this? If I pattern components, I'd have multiple bodies or multiple components, and then I could join them together. I could also say pattern faces, but then I'd have to manually select all of the faces. But this features is a really powerful option. And what that allows you to do is actually pick features from your timeline and pattern those. So I'm gonna say features, and then I'm gonna select that extrude feature. And you'll notice it selected all of the faces for me. Okay, so we're basically saying pattern the extrude that we did. What's the direction? I'll go ahead and specify pointing up. And here you can kind of see the rectangular part. Well, I'm going to just start to drag up and it's only patterning in that direction. I'm not going to drag to the right and create patterns over here. Okay, so you can see I've started to get a nice preview of what that's going to look like. I can specify the quantity. So in this case, I want to do five. And then you'll also notice we have extent and we have spacing. So extent would be, you know it from the bottom to the top, it needs to be you know five inches, you would say five, and it would fill in in between. Or if you know the spacing, which we do because of the drawing, I could come in here and say 0.675, and you'll see how my pattern kind of shrinks just a little bit. And I now have a quantity of five. Then you'll notice there's little check boxes on each of these, and that's this suppress. And what this allows you to do is you could actually turn any of those on or off. It's kind of a cool way to create you know, complex patterns and then remove maybe a couple of the features out of there. In this case, we don't need to, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that off and say okay. And now I have all these little disks or wafers. And if I expand open my stake component, and I expand open the bodies, you'll notice that, um, oops, let me click on the down arrow. You'll see I have multiple different bodies, okay? 
Now we're gonna fix that here in a little bit. So now what I wanna do next is, let's go back to the drawing. I've created all of these little disks. Now I want to go ahead and do the thicker one on top. You can see that it's a little bit thicker than the rest of them. So let's jump back into Fusion. And I'm gonna say I want to create another extrude. So I'm gonna come in here and say create extrude. Now it's asking for the profile. So I could have created another sketch, you know, offset plane or something like that according to the drawing, but check out this neat little tip. I'm gonna expand, open my sketches, turn on that sketch, and here's my original sketch, okay? So that's my original profile. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now, if I were to start to extrude, it's gonna start way down here. In fact, it's gonna cut through my other geometry. But check this out. Instead of starting at the profile plane, I can come in here and say offset plane. And according to the drawing, it's gonna be 3.45. So I'm gonna type in 3.45 and notice what it's doing now. It's using my existing profile, so I didn't have to draw another sketch or create an offset um, construction plane or anything like that. And it's basically saying use that profile, but start 3.45 away from where that plane actually is. And so now we're extruding up here. And I can type in the correct distance, uh, which in this case um, is 0.2. Um, in fact, actually, if, uh, according to the drawing, 3.45 goes to the top. So I'm going to say minus 0.2. Let me show you what I mean by that. <laughs> so you can see here's the 3.45 goes to the top of that part. And so we're, we're basically putting our profile plane there and then extruding down 0.2. Okay, so I'll say okay, I get another body that's added in there. So the next thing, let's look at the drawing again one more time. Um, let's go ahead and put these um, ribs in here, okay? Now, as I was um, messing around with this and trying things out, I tried using the web command and the rib command, which we have in here. Um, but neither of them worked in this case. And the reason for that is typically, you'll notice for example, like the web, it, it's looking for like an interior void, like a shelled object, for example. Um, and, and rib is looking for a single part. And here I've got multiple parts. And when I did get it to work, they actually had square corners and they didn't follow the shape of this circle. So I ended up having to actually draw a profile, which is fine and I want to reuse my existing sketch. So here's something kind of interesting. I don't do this all that often, but there's some really powerful commands in here. My sketch is at the very beginning in time, and we've done some downstream processes. But remember my sketch? It only was a circle. Well, I'm gonna go back and edit that very first sketch, and let's just draw some lines on here. So I'm gonna um, I'm going to purposely draw off to the side, like so, and purposely draw off to the side, like so, okay? Then I can come in and say, I want that line to be coincident with that point, and I want that line to be coincident with that point, and you'll notice they turn from blue to black, which means they're fully constrained. And then I don't want them to be object lines, so I'm going to select them and turn them to construction. So I'll go ahead and click on construction and you can see now they're like light pencil lines. Okay, I want to basically create that web looking shape. It's basically looks like a big plus. So instead of drawing a bunch of lines, I'm gonna use the offset command. So I could click this existing line and I want to offset that um, 0 0.05. Okay, because it's gonna be 0.1 for the total width. So I said 0 0.05. I'll do the same thing here. I'll say minus 0 0.05. And you'll notice that it's created those lines. I'll do that again. I'll, I'll do an offset here. I'll say uh, 
uh, 0.5, sorry, 0 0.05. And I don't know if you saw that little trick that I just did here. I'm just right clicking and dragging straight up and it's gonna repeat the last command that I'm doing. So if I right mouse click, you'll see this blue radar. We call this our marking menu. And you'll notice if I drag straight up, it's repeat the last command. In this case, it was repeat the offset. So if I just right click and drag straight up, it's gonna repeat my last command. So it's a real fast way, instead of having to go into the menu or anything like that. Um, sorry, minus 0 0.05. Say okay. And now you'll notice that I have um, these black lines. Now I could come in and trim these little segments out of here, but there's no need to. And like I showed before, I can actually select my profiles in here, right? Pre-select them. Then I'm gonna right mouse click and say extrude. And it brings me into um, my 3D workspace. Um, but in this case, you'll notice it's not showing any geometry, right? Now, why is that? Well, look where we are in time. We're at the very first step. We actually haven't extruded our part yet. So going back in time, kind of messing around with your timeline is really powerful, but it can also be a little bit confusing. So why are we not seeing it? So in that example, I don't want to um, pre-selected my sketch. I'm gonna say finish sketch. Now I can see my all my parts, but I can also see my sketch. So now I'll, I'll select it because we're at the end of, oops, end of our timeline right there. So I'll go ahead and click these guys here. Right mouse click. I love the right mouse click. It shows me the commands that make sense. In this case, extrude. And I'll start to drag to kind of give it its shape. Now you'll notice it's wanting to cut that away. We'll fix that here in a minute. I want it to go all the way up to this face. So again, instead of typing in a dimension, I can just click on that face and it's gonna extrude the correct distance. Now, obviously we don't wanna cut through. I wanna say join. And here's where the magic happens. Watch what happens to all of my bodies over here. So I took my profile, I said extrude, I'll say okay and it's all one body now because they joined them all together. And also notice how nice, you know, this, this web basically is nice and curved. It kind of joins with uh, all those little disks and that's why I ended up drawing the profile. Okay, I'll turn off that sketch down there. I don't need to see it right now. But you can see pretty quickly we created what looks like a complex part using just a couple commands. What I might do now is I'm still kind of working on this webbed area right here. So the next thing I want to do, uh, and it's kind of hard to see, and that's why I did the two views here. There's some added material in here to add some strength for the hole and the, and the threads that are going to go in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is basically draw that profile. And you can see um, that it's uh, 1.3 in diameter uh, in that case, okay, according to the drawing. So I'll go ahead, maybe I'll create a sketch on this top face, do a circle, type in the diameter of 1.03. I'll finish my sketch. And let's go ahead and extrude this. So I'll start to extrude down. Now you'll notice I didn't put the hole or anything like that in there. And again, because it's cutting into the geometry, it thinks you want to remove or cut away material. But in this case, we actually want to join material. And um, I want to do the 0 0.09. I'm sorry, 0.9. So I'll say minus 0.9. And you can see how that extrudes down. Okay. And again, I'm gonna join that together. I'll go ahead and reuse that sketch. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that sketch. And what I wanna do now is add this little peak. 
I think it's kind of like an alignment arrow that lets you like point the, the laser in the correct direction. So you'll notice I um, basically all I did was give you the distance from the bottom of the circle to the tip of the peak. Uh, no angles or anything like that. So let's see how we can go about making that guy. So what I'm going to do here is draw a line again kind of from the bottom and I'm just going to randomly pick some distance. I'm just going to click up there and say OK. OK. Now I like to draw off to the side that way I can physically see the changes happen. So when I come in here and say I want this line to be coincident with that point I can physically see it move over. I can physically see that it went from unconstrained to constrained. Okay. Then I'll come in here and do a line. Now we've shared this tip in the past. If you get near a circle and then you click and hold it actually creates a tangent constraint for you automatically. And you can kind of see that icon at the end of my line. It's staying stuck to the circle. And then I'm just going to go to that point. I'll do the same thing over here. I'm just going to click and hold. It's going to create a tangent constraint for me. And then I'll just go to that point. So there's my peak. Now all I have to do, let's throw a dimension on here. I'll grab that line. And that line is supposed to be 1.7. And watch what happens to the peak. You'll notice that the lines still stay tangent because they were constrained to be tangent. And the length is now 1.7. Okay. And notice now they, because I've thrown a dimension on there, they're fully constrained, whereas before they weren't. Um, because I could have changed the, where that peak location was, but by adding the dimension, it did constrain it. Okay, I'll uh, pre-select these guys. I'll say extrude and start to drag down. And you can kind of see it's adding that geometry. Again, how far? All I have to do is just click on a face and it snaps the correct distance. I use that snap to a face all the time. Like if I were to click there, you'll see it's going to snap to that face. So it's a really powerful tip. We'll say OK, and I'll go ahead and turn that sketch off. Now, here's another tip. Um, when I'm helping out customers and stuff like that, I might say, turn off your sketch. They end up turning off the sketch here, and that does work. But then when you go to create another sketch, you'll get that visibility warning or whatever. So I usually turn off the individual sketch and leave my sketches turned on. OK? Okay, so now the next thing we want to do is put that threaded hole. And I'm going to use the hole command to do that. So, or the H for shortcut. You'll also notice that we have a thread command. That is more for like bosses or existing holes. I'm going to use the hole command and they've added some thread stuff in there. So for example, you can kind of see I've got simple, counterbore, countersink. I've got simple tap types, simple clearance, tapped, etc., tapered tapped, thread offsets, everything. It's really kind of cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick a point, a random point. Okay. Now, in this case, I have a really small circle. Um, and according to the drawing, um, it's an actual 3 quarter by 12. So instead of having to look things up, I'm actually going to click on this tapped and notice what it gives me. It actually allows me to pick different threads. So you can see Acme screw threads, ANSI, metric, DIN, JIS, ISO, etc. So I'm going to do the unified screw threads. The designation, um, or the size, I'm sorry, I'm going to do a 3 quarter, so a 0.75, okay? And it gives me a live preview of what that's going to look like. Then I also want it to be 3 quarter 12, so I'm going to come in here and say 3 quarter 12. 
but you'll notice it's in the wrong location. So I'm going to grab that little round dot and you'll notice I'm going to move away. There's two dots on the screen right there and all I have to do is get near that bottom dot and that bottom dot is the center of the circle. The other one was the center of the face and because we have this little peak here that's why you saw that second dot. But it automatically caught to the center for me. I didn't have to add any dimensions or references or anything like that. Okay. Then lastly you'll notice it says modeled and if I click on modeled it'll actually physically model that. Now again this is personal preference you know if you're gonna 3D print it you might want it modeled um, if it, you just want it as a reference, you could leave it and it's almost like a sticker or a decal. Uh, to make things more interesting, I'm going to do modeled. Now, I also want it to be countersunk or counterbore, I should say. So I'm going to say counterbore. And here you can see I can type in what the diameter of my counterbore is. And again, according to the drawing, and unfortunately I already had it filled in, but it's 0.8. And then I can specify the depth. So for example, if I say 0.1, you can see that it's going to counterbore down 0.1. And according to the drawing, uh, the counterbore is 0.29 deep. So you can kind of see it's going to create a counterbore and then start those threads. So it's a really easy and fast way to create complicated geometry. I'll just go ahead and say OK so you can kind of see the final product. But what that's going to allow it to do is allow the other part to screw in and basically, you know, seat at this particular height, for example, before it bottoms out uh, into the bottom of the part. And you'll notice that it created a feature in the timeline. So I could always come back and make changes to this if I needed to. Okay, uh, we are moving along. We're doing pretty good here. I'll go back to my uh, drawing real quick. So I've pretty much finished everything that has to do with this top part. The next thing I want to do is um, create the stake part. Okay, Now its thicknesses are the exact same as the, the ribs up here. So I want to reuse as much information as possible. So let's go back and turn on our original sketch one. And there's the correct width. But I need to add some more geometry to this. So again, I'm going to go all the way back in time, double click on my original sketch, and I'll just create another circle in here. And in this case, it's a one inch diameter. And I'm going to say finish sketch. Now you'll notice by adding that circle, it didn't affect any of my downstream processes because we didn't use that circle to create any of this geometry. But now I have the ability to come in and say I want to select these regions and you'll notice that it's basically defined by that one inch um, circle that we just added so I'm going to go ahead and grab I might have to zoom up here um, all of these areas like so I'll right click and say extrude and I'll start to drag down and it gives me a live preview of what that's going to look like so again, using the exact same sketch I started out with. So it just speeds things up. Yes, I could have created another sketch. I could have drawn more geometry. I could have reprojected geometry, but there's no need to. Okay, um, I need to set the correct distance. And again, according to the drawing, it's 4.625 in the negative direction. 625, oops, 625. Okay. So there I'm getting my stake. Well, it needs to be tapered one degree. And you'll notice in my extrude, I have this taper angle. So I'm going to type in one. And you'll notice, oops, it, extrude, or it tapered the wrong direction. So I'm going to say minus one. But watch what happens. I don't get the result that I expected or want it's actually tapering every single face. So yes, it's doing the angled faces there, but it's also tapering you know, these little webbed faces. So I can't really do a taper angle in my extrude. 
Also, again, personal preference. I personally don't like doing tapers in the extrude because if I want to change it, I have to remember I did it in the extrude. So instead, we're going to use the draft command. And I like to use the draft command because then it shows up as a feature in the timeline. So everything is good here. We're going to join that together. I'll turn off that sketch so I don't need it anymore. Then I'll come in here and say draft under the modify menu. So it's asking for a plane. And what this is basically saying is where are the angles going to hinge around? So I'm going to pick on this plane and you can kind of think of each of these edges having a hinge and the face is going to rotate around that hinge basically. So that's our draft plane. And now it's asking for the faces and I can be very specific. I can say I only want these outside faces. And again, I like to pick through. I'm just going to click and hold to grab that hidden face. I'm going to click and hold to grab that hidden face. I don't have to rotate around. Let's take a look at it kind of from the side here. Oh, I already, sorry. <laughs> it would look like this. You know, I've selected the faces and now I can come in and add my draft angle. So for example, if I say two, you can see how those are drafted two degrees, but the ribs are staying the same thickness, which is what we want. In this case, according to the drawing, we want one degree. And I'll say, okay. So we just added some draft to the design. Okay. Um, according to the drawing, we want to kind of sharpen the point. So a 70 degree by a distance. So I'm going to use the chamfer command, let the software do the hard work. So I can come in here and say, I'll click that edge and I'll say chamfer. And by default, it's usually set to equal distance. And what that does is it does a 45 degree. So I'm going to go ahead and select all four of these. And maybe, you know, that's what we want. But according to the drawing, we want it to be a little bit more steep. So I'm going to do distance and an angle because that's what the drawing gave me. So let's do, I'm going to do a smaller distance. Let's just do 0.1 and then let's do a steeper angle. Let's do the 70 degrees. Oops, 70 degrees. And now you can see the steeper angle. Okay. And as we start to drag this in, you can see what that's going to look like. Now, if we go too far, you can see that it errors out because it's basically destroying geometry. You can't physically do that. So I picked a dimension of 0.346. And you can see that's about as close as we can get to a sharp point. And I'll say OK. And we now have the sharp point. OK, the last thing I want to do now is, according to the drawing, um, we've, we've added the, the sharp point there. We've got the threads, the counter bore, everything like that. So they're really, we're done with the design, except for add the 0.01 fillets to all edges when complete, except for the threads, okay? So I'm gonna jump back into Fusion. And if I were to say fillet and draw a box around everything, it would also select all of these edges inside of here. And we don't want it to do that. So what I can do is here's my whole feature. I'm going to right click on it and say suppress features. And you'll notice it didn't remove it or delete it or anything like that. It's still in my timeline, but it's kind of grayed out. And you'll notice that the hole doesn't exist anymore. Then I'm going to come in and say fill it. I'll draw a box around everything. It's asking for the size, so I'm going to say 0 0.01. And this is really cool because really quickly, it's selected all of the faces, all of the edges, and you can see that it's doing these really nice fillets on all of those edges, except for the threads, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. 
And instead of having to manually select all of those individual edges and all that kind of stuff, I just basically drew a selection box around the whole thing. And you can see how we've knocked all the sharp edges. In fact, if I zoom up here, notice the nice looking, you know, five fillets coming into one. I think that's really cool looking. Um, we filleted and knocked all the sharp edges off this part. Now I'm going to go back and unsuppress the hole. And let's take a look at what happens here. Okay, I'm going to zoom up and you'll notice that the threads are not filleted. But you'll notice that the top of the hole is. And you might be saying, well, I thought you turned that off when you suppressed the hole. And sure enough, I did. But when I did the fillet command and I drew a box around everything, in fact, let me go ahead and edit that fillet again. Let me edit that guy. You'll notice it says 113 faces and also 272 edges. So by selecting this face, it's going to grab all of the edges necessary to fill it that face. Okay. Notice where it is in time. It's the last thing. We unsuppressed the hole. So now there's a hole in there. It goes and does the next few steps and now it gets to this fillet. It says, oh, I have to fill it all of the edges that have to do with that face. And so it actually filleted the top of that hole for me. So that's why you see that edge filleted, but it didn't fillet these because these weren't part of the selection. Hopefully that makes sense, but it's, I think it's a really cool feature. Okay, so we are done. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And it's going to go from version one to version two. I could have typed in, you know, final design or whatever. Another thing I like to do instead of kind of this plain gray, I hit A for appearance. And you'll have all of your appearances here. Now I messed around with a particular appearance to get it the way I liked. And so I added it to my favorites. So if I click on favorites, you can see like here's my cardboard material and then here's my random textured plastic. So I'm just going to drag and drop that on there. And if we zoom up, sure enough, you can see it looks kind of like molded or injection molded plastic. So how did I do that? Well, you just, you know, pick a particular uh, material. You edit that material to whatever you want. You know, let's say I change the color. Then I can right mouse click and say add to favorites. So really quick way to reuse, you know, because we're going to use this color for the rest of the parts. Okay. Um, <laughs> I never know how long things are going to take. So we've got about 20 minutes left and I could either stop now and we do this next part the next time, or I could start on this part, which I think I'm going to do. We might go a little bit long. Um, so I apologize. I never know how long these are going to take. So hopefully you all can last a little bit longer uh, than an hour. This looks pretty complicated, but it's pretty similar to what we did on the last part. So I'm going to go through creating these ribs a little bit um, faster. So, um, but there's some cool tips and tricks you're going to learn with this particular design. Um, okay. Yeah, and if you guys can't hang on for a little bit longer than an hour, this is going to be out on YouTube. So, um, okay. So I started a new design. And again, first thing I'm going to do, create a new component. I'm going to call this pivot, pivot base. I'll go ahead and save my design. So uh, my autosave is working. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did last time. Create a circle that's the correct size. Now, here's where the cool thing comes in. It's the exact same size and shape of my previous part that I just designed. I would love to reuse that. But you'll notice I'm in a new design. Check this out. I'm going to go back to my steak part. I'm going to edit that sketch draw a selection box around it and I'm going to do control C for copy okay 
or I can right mouse click and say copy. Then I'm going to jump over to my pivot base. I'm in this sketch. I'm going to whoops, right click and say paste. And boom, I brought the sketch from a totally different design into here and it's got everything that I need. Okay, it's got my crosshairs, it's got the outside diameter. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And now um, you'll notice I'd have to select a lot of these interior things to extrude. I wanna extrude basically the whole shape. So instead I'm just gonna draw a box around the whole thing and say extrude. And it's gonna grab all those profiles for me and it's basically gonna create that disc for me. So point one, I'll say okay. That's part of my sketches right here, right there. If I turn that back on, I can still see it. So I was able to reuse existing geometry and I hope everybody liked that. So if you liked it, um, throw a thumbs up out there. I try and come up with new tips and tricks to speed up your design, so hopefully that helps you. Okay, um, pretty much the same thing I did last time. I'm gonna come in here and say pattern. I wanna make sure features, I wanna extrude, or I'm sorry, I wanna pattern that extrude feature. Tell it which direction, pointing up. Tell it what the spacing is, and in this case, the spacing is actually a little bit different. It's 0.5. And I only need to do three for the quantity. I'll turn my sketch back on. I think you guys see where this is going. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and select these profiles again. Okay. I'll say extrude. I like to start to drag to kind of get a preview and then it lets me snap to that underside of that face and we're going to obviously join that together and I'll say okay okay um, now I'm going to go ahead and edit the sketch one more time and I need to make sure I have my correct drawing here sorry guys okay um, what I want to do here is I don't need this circle in this design so I'm going to go ahead and delete it and I'm going to create a three quarter or 0.75 inch circle. And I'm gonna use that. Now, again, I could draw a selection box like so, and it's gonna select all of those profiles for me. And I could say extrude. So I didn't have to manually click in all of these little individual profiles. You know, there's like well, probably what, um, eight or ten of those in there so okay uh, I'm gonna extrude this down this is where we're gonna do the threads and this is where you're gonna see the thread command come into play so I basically create this boss like so but then I want to thread it according to the drawing so basically we're gonna be creating this region right here uh, actually I should show you really quick let me go back to the drawing you'll notice that the threads do not go the full length so I extruded 0.75 but you'll notice this is a 3 quarter 12 but the threads are only 0.65 okay so I'm gonna come in here and say create thread I'll click on the faces that I want to thread we're gonna say it's gonna be modeled because that's cooler looking. But then you'll notice it says full length. I'm gonna turn off full length. And now I get the option to, de to define how tall the threads go. Okay, so for the length, it's supposed to be 0.65. So you'll notice it's gonna go 0.65 up and then stop. It's gonna be the, um, three quarter 12, because that's what the other one was. So I'm gonna say three quarter 12, ANSI, UN, everything else there looks good. And I'll say, okay. So we've just threaded that part. Okay. I know I'm kind of going pretty good pace here, but then the, I did the exact same thing with this design that I did with the last design. I kind of broke it down into its simplest forms. 
So the first part was basically this webbed area here. And I'm going to say the second part is kind of this, you know, plastic area up here. And so I broke it down into its simplest form. So what I'm going to do now is draw this area. Okay. Now here's another cool trick. What I want to do is I don't want to have to draw another sketch. I just want to reuse this particular shape and I want to extrude it up. So I'm going to start to extrude, but you'll notice that it's joining it to the existing part. And I don't want it to be joined. I kind of want to work on this part as like a separate entity until I'm ready to join it. So I'm going to come in here and say, I want that to be a new body. Okay. And the overall height, according to the drawing, is 1.7. So watch what happens over here when I say OK. I now have two separate bodies, but I used the information from body one to create this other body. So again, didn't have to create a sketch. I'm going to round over the top because it's Basically, you can kind of see there a radius of 0.75. So let's go ahead and jump back to Fusion. I'm going to go ahead and select that and say fill it. Now, how big do I need it to be? Well, I could type in 0.75 or check this out. I'm going to say measure. Okay. Then I'm going to click on this edge. And it figured out what the radius was of that edge and filled it in for me automatically. Again, I could have typed it in, but instead I let Fusion do the hard work. I might have accidentally typed in you know, 0.76 or something like that or whatever. So kind of a neat little tip. I like that one. Okay. Now, obviously this part looks like it's kind of like split in half and we don't even need half of it so I'm gonna use the split command because this is all one shape okay so I'm gonna come under here under modify and sp say split body what's the body now because we didn't join them together this is a totally separate body what's my splitting tool I'm just gonna go ahead and click one of these planes now you'll notice they're buried so here's another trick. If you zoom out, you can actually click on it, right? Or you can click and hold and select it in there. So you can see it's going to basically split that body right in half. I'll say OK. And now I have three bodies. We don't need body five, so I'm going to right mouse click on it and say remove. Please don't use delete. In fact, I, I wish that we didn't even have this command. Now, obviously, it's in there for a reason. But what remove does is it removes it out of our design. But you'll notice it added a feature into the timeline that we said, hey, we removed that body. If I had said delete, it would have physically deleted that model. But if that model um, was used for creating other sketches or lining things up and you said delete all of your downstream processes could fail and, or get warnings and errors and it's such a, a mess to deal with so always 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 use remove if you can okay so I now have you know half of this uh, body there and I'm going to take a look at the drawing real quick. We're actually doing pretty good on time. We've actually might, believe it or not, might finish this at the top of the hour. What I want to do now is I'm kind of, again, working on this top half. And there's this little standoff where a threaded um, thumb screw is going to go into. So you, you don't want to thumb screw into a curved surface. So they added this little standoff there. Uh, so you can kind of see it's a radius of point, I'm sorry, a diameter of 0.8, a diameter of 0.25 going through. Um, and it's just basically at the same plane as the outside edge. So I'm going to need to create a sketch that's over here somewhere. And I don't have a flat plane. There's one here, but I'd have to know the exact distance and all that kind of stuff. 
and I'm bad at math, so we don't want to do that. So I'm going to come in here to the, I'm sorry, construct menu, and there's a cool command in here called tangent plane. I'm just going to go ahead and pick on that face, and you'll see that it's actually going to put a construction plane on that face at whatever degree I want it to be at, and it's going to stay tangent to that surface. Okay, really powerful construction plane. Now in this case, I want it to stay at zero, but it's exactly at the edge of that, this surface right here. It's touching it, it's tangent to it. Now I can create my sketch. Again, I like to draw things kind of off center a little bit and watch it go into place. So I'm gonna say 0.25. I'll repeat my last command. And this one is 0.8, if I remember correctly. Okay. Then I can throw some dimensions on here. Now, according to the drawing, those holes are located um, off the bottom of this part right here. So I'm going to click there. And I'll click there. Place my dimension. And it's supposed to be uh, 2.05 up. So I can see that that moved up. And I want it to be... Um, in line with this point right there. So I'm going to kind of drag this across a little bit to get it maybe a little bit closer. And I could say I want that point and that point to be vertical with each other. So I didn't even have to throw a dimension on there. I just said this has to be centered, right? <laughs> and now you'll notice it's fully constrained. I'll uh, click on that face. I'll say extrude, I'll start to drag, and I'll click on that face for it to go the correct distance. Okay, now you'll notice I only did the small hole because I obviously couldn't do the, the large one at the same time, and it went away. But all I have to do is turn that sketch back on, and now you can kind of see why I keep my sketches folder opened up. I can just get to these really quick. Now I'll click on that profile, I'll say extrude, but as I start to extrude, it's instantly cutting into my geometry, and I want it to be an actual extrude, and how far do I need to go? Well, here's another neat little tip. I'm going to say, instead of distance, I'm going to say to object. What's the object? I'm going to pick this curved surface, so it's going to go as far as it needs to go to touch that surface and there you can kind of see sure enough it is and instead of a cut we want to say join and so I get that result there it's taking that profile and extruding it as far as it needs to go to physically touch that part and we're going to join it together and there we are okay let's turn off my sketch Still working on this upper area here. The next thing I want to do is I want to shell it out. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this face, right mouse click, and shell is one of the options I can do. So I'm going to say shell, and I like to start to drag to kind of see what that looks like. Okay. Now I see an issue. Notice that it's also shelling right here. I actually don't want that face to be there. So I need to add in that bottom face right there. So I'm going to select it and now watch what's happening. In fact, if I were to turn off body one, you can kind of see it's now shelling not only into the part this direction, it's shelling into the part from the bottom also. So in this example, I did have to select two different faces to shell this part out. And we're going to go point 0.1. And I love our shell command. I mean, notice because we put the hole through there already, it's adding this automatic boss around there for me, which is kind of cool. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, hopefully Aaron's having fun with all the chat and people are learning things. Um, so the next thing I want to do is start working on all these teeth. Okay, and you'll notice I give some, some details here. Um, the angle of the teeth and how many they're evenly spaced. You'll see some uh, diameter 
1.5, 1.3 in there. So let's go ahead and create a sketch on that face. Okay. And I'm going to draw a circle that touches, and you'll notice it snaps to that circle there. And I'm going to grab and snap to that circle there also. Okay. Now I'm going to draw just one tooth. So I need, I need some information here. So I'm just going to draw a line like so, construction line. Then I'm just going to come in and draw an angled line that touches this outside circle. So I'll go there and there, you know. I, again, I over exaggerate. Now I can come in and add a dimension. So from that line to that line, that's supposed to be 1.91 degrees. And watch what happens to my line. It, it updates, it moves, it turns black, which means it's constrained. And then I need to do a dimension between that line. I could mirror it, but um, I gave the dimension of 3.82 degrees. And so you can see that comes back also. And it's fully constrained. OK, I'm going to say finish sketch in this case. And I need to extend this profile into the part. Now you'll notice, yes, I drew these circles, but then I also drew this tooth because I'm going to come back and use that tooth a little bit later. But I put them both on one sketch because they're kind of similar. They're kind of defined on the same thing. So instead, again, of having multiple sketches in my timeline, I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. So I'll come in here and say extrude. I'll start to drag backwards. Now you can see it's wanting to cut into there. Well, we're going to say join. And how far? We're going to say to object. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that curved surface there. And it's kind of hard to see with all the blue, but it actually extruded all the way back to that back surface. I'll turn that sketch back on. I'll zoom up here, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude the tooth. Now, it, it, this is a really kind of a tiny tooth. And so the distance is 0 0.01. So you can kind of see that. Now, again, you might ask about, you know, this. could I do this taper angle 45, actually minus 45, to create the, the peak? And you'll notice that it actually doesn't go to a sharp edge. So let's try minus. 60 or something like that. But the issue is it's tapering down the top and the bottom also, and I don't want it to do that. I want it to be straight out. So again, I'm not going to use the taper angle in this case. I'm just going to go ahead and extrude straight out 0 0.01. Then I'm going to create a chamfer. So I'll say chamfer. Let's go ahead and do both of these edges. And in this case, instead of distance and an angle, I'm going to say two distances. And what this allows you to do is to basically specify two different distances. And I'm going to go ahead and grab these arrows so you can kind of start to see what's going on here. Okay. So for this, um, for this distance here, let me change that so I can see. Yeah, that's the, the bottom one. I know that that's going to be 0.1, I'm sorry, 0.01 in depth right because that's how thick my tooth was so that's that distance then this other distance you can kind of see as I'm going down because this is a tapered <laughs> tooth you'll see it's gonna leave a little bit of a sliver and if I go too far it, it basically errors out so I'm gonna go to a very specific distance okay like in this case I could say 0.025 or I could say 0.0 to four and you'll see it leaves a little bit of a face there but that's okay let's just get it as small as we can I'll just say okay like that and I just created one tooth okay now I there's again multiple ways I could have created this I could have done a profile and swept it along a path I'm not saying this is the only way to do this 
Okay, we're getting pretty close. We're gonna go a little bit over, but hopefully you guys can hang on. So, okay. Obviously I drew one. I'm going to reuse that. Let's say create pattern, circular pattern. Again, I wanna make sure I'm doing features and I'm going to do the extrude feature and the chamfer feature at the same time. What's my axis? I'll probably just click maybe like the cylinder here. What's the quantity? Well, in this case, it's actually 46. And you'll see it gives me a preview of what that's gonna look like. And once again, I'm probably not gonna suppress any of these. I'm just gonna turn that off just to kind of speed things up. And I'll just say, okay and instantly we have all of these little grooved teeth by using a pattern. Very, very fast way of doing it. Yeah, let's look at the drawing. So we've created that. Honestly, all that looks left to do is these little webs that are in here, and you'll notice that they're recessed back a little bit. That's kind of why I did this detail. It's kind of hard to see in the shaded view. So it's recessed back. Um, and I know I gave a dimension, I'm not sure exactly where. Um, huh, I'll have to review my drawing, I might have to re-upload my drawing. Uh, okay, so let me jump back in here. I'm going to create an offset plane and it's minus 0.1. And I think it is on the drawing, I just, uh, a little bit rushed, I don't wanna have to hunt it down. So you'll notice my plane is kind of small. If you get near the corner, you can actually drag the planes to be bigger. So if I just grab the corner, I can make that plane bigger if I want to. You don't have to, it's not necessary. But if it's just something you want to make a little bit bigger, you can just grab the corners. So I'm gonna create a sketch. I'm going to draw my lines. Now I'm just gonna kind of draw a line like this. Now you'll notice that I have to hit this checkbox and then I can come over here and draw a line. And if I don't hit that checkbox, it's wanting to continue this line. Well, here's where that marking menu comes back into play. Notice at three o'clock, it says, okay. Okay. So check this out. I've drawn my line. I'm just going to drag to the right and I'm said, okay, I'm finished with that, that line. So same thing here, I'm just gonna draw a line, drag to the right, and I'm out of that. I don't have to hit that green checkbox every single time. Okay, just drag to the right, and we're done. I'll do the same thing here. I'm, and again, I don't know where these lines have to be. I'm just kinda drawing where I think they should be. And then we'll come back and fix this in a little bit. Okay. Notice these lines are blue. They're not fully constrained. But if I came in here and said horizontal vertical, I want that point to be horizontal vertical with that point. You can see that I'm now constraining these lines because if I didn't, I can move these around, right? Yep, they're nice and vertical, but I want them to be in line with that center point. So that's why I'm adding in these constraints like so, okay? Okay, uh, down here, there are some dimensions. So I'm gonna say um, dimension right here. So maybe I'll click that center point. I'll click this line. And um, according to the drawing, that's supposed to be 0 0.175, 0 0.175. And you see they kind of went up a little bit. That's okay. Um, I'll do the same thing here. Or I'm sorry, I'll do dimension from here to here. And that's supposed to be um, 0.225 according to the drawing. Now it did move these, so I'm gonna move them back because we're gonna use the web command and I want them to be in the correct location, um, kind of in this void. So I'm just gonna move that guy down. I'm gonna move this guy down. And now I have these dimensioned. I want them over here. So we'll do the mirror command. That line and that line. And I can just pick, for example, that line there because it's right down the center. And I'm gonna mirror that over. 
I went through that pretty quick. Uh, hopefully you all understand sketching and adding constraints and having a fully constrained sketch. So if you need to review that, you can always re rewind the video. So I basically have these weird line segments kind of floating in space. Here is where the web command really shines. Okay, so I'm going to say web. I'm going to go ahead and click on that line and notice what it did. I mean, it's even going back into this little recess and everything like that. Think about how complicated. I have to do some weird extrusions and they'd probably come out through the back of the part. So this web command is extremely useful. The key thing is this extend curves. If I had that turned off, it's only going to do the length of the uh, line that I drew. But because I have extend curves, it's going to extend as far as it can. So I'm going to go ahead and select all four of these. And boom, we now have those webs in there. Okay. Now I'm going to click on this line, but watch what happens when I try and add that in. You'll see it says the curve you're trying to select is an intersecting blah, blah, blah. And that's because of this extend curves. So I'm going to have to do these four lines separately. So I'm going to do these up here. I'm going to say, okay, turn my sketch back on, create a web. Now I can click on that line and of course it's complaining and I'm not sure why. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> Let me say two next. Ah, okay. That usually works. Not sure why it's not in this case. Um, oh, I do know why. <laughs> I just figured this out. Okay, so it says it does not intersect with a solid body. Guess what? This is a separate body. In fact, if I were to turn that off, it says, hey, I'm trying to intersect, but nothing exists. So I am happy with how this looks. So I'm going to come in here and combine that body with that body. We want to join them together. And I don't need to keep the tool. I just basically want to join these two bodies together. I'll say OK. And now we can see that that's all one body. And if I were to come in and say web, now it's happier. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing wrong here? OK, so now it has, you know, it can go up to this curved surface. It can come down to this flat surface. And there we go. OK. I'll turn off my sketch and we are pretty much done with the design. The last thing on the drawing is add fillets to all the edges when complete except for the threads and the teeth. Okay, throw a little bit of a curveball into here. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I want to add that fillet. So I'm going to Actually, let me do these bigger fillets first. So I'm going to click on that edge and say 0 0.05. And I'll do that edge also. And I get that really cool fillet that's kind of joining onto a curved surface. Looks really nice. Okay, so now I want to do all my little tiny fillets. I, I kind of go from big to small. That's why I did those first. Obviously, I don't want to do the teeth, so I'm going to come in here and suppress those features, including the extrude. Let me suppress that guy. So now I have that simplified model. I could suppress the uh, threads, but I don't need to in this case. In fact, you'll see if I come in here and say fill it, I'm just going to draw a selection box that does not go down below those threads. I'm going to just go to there. We'll do the 0 0.05. Um, I'm sorry, 0 0.01 in this case. Okay, and there it's filleting all of those edges. I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And you'll notice it didn't select my thread. So I could have suppressed my threads, but in this case I didn't need to. Now I'll unsuppress 
these guys. I'll come in and say unsuppress, but watch what happens. My fillet errors out. I get a warning message that just says error, and you'll notice that none of these fillets showed up, and this is red. Okay. This happens all the time with customers that I'm helping out with. They, they'll, they'll be like, why did this not work? Well, in this case, it's because there's all those little teeth and there's all these little edges that, that were selected and now they're kind of like overlapped by these teeth. So we actually need to change the order of when we're going to put those fillets on. So I'm going to come in here and let's just delete that fillet. Well, I want to fill it all of these ribs and stuff like that that are in here. So what I really want to do is maybe I want to move the teeth to the end of the timeline. So I'm going to select the extrude, the chamfer, and the pattern. I'm just going to click and drag to the end of my timeline. And now notice there's my extrude, my chamfer, and my pattern at the end of the timeline. Okay, they're actually created after we've created these ribs and all that kind of stuff. Then what I can do is I'm going to drag my timeline before all of these teeth happen. We'll do our fillet. Again, just drawing a box to kind of select what I want. I'll do the 0 0.01. I'll say OK. So these fillets were added at this point in time. Then we add the extrude, the chamfer, and the pattern. So I'm going to go to the end of time and look what happened. The teeth worked and my fillets worked. Pretty cool. However, be careful. Okay, we've kind of changed the recipe. So I'm going to do some investigation. You'll notice that I int introduced an error here. So I'm going to zoom up on my teeth and those look pretty good. But if I take a look that there's, there's a now a fillet on this edge and those teeth overlap that fillet. Now they used to go to a sharp edge, right? This, this edge used to be sharp and it used to go right to here, but now we filleted that edge and then we did the extrude and then we did the pattern. And so these are basically floating off of that fillet. Well, that's actually easy enough to fix. I could come into the extrude. Actually, let me uh, let me zoom up on the actual tooth up here so you can kind of see what's going on here. Okay, so I'm gonna edit that extrude. And instead of going just one direction, let's have it go symmetrically both directions. And you can see it's gonna go point one that way. It's gonna go point one that way. I'll say, okay. It'll do all of my downstream processes, and now those teeth actually extend back to this edge, which is what we want. And you can see a simple fix for a complicated problem. A for appearance. Go to my favorites. We'll drag that plastic texture on there. And we are done. I will say save. I'll call this final. So I do appreciate you guys hanging the extra 15 minutes. I never know how long these take um, you know, when I practice them and stuff like that versus doing them live. Uh, hopefully uh, you found both of these parts beneficial. Uh, you learned some tips and tricks. I'm going to continue reverse engineering all of the parts uh, in this thing. We're going to probably do the body next. Um, and then we'll do some of the internals like... Um, some of the mounts, the lasers, the circuit board, etc. So keep an eye out on our um, live stream channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. That way you're notified when these uh, other live streams are happening. Um, we have a lot of cool stuff happening in Fusion right now with all the electrical design. We're actually doing live streams on Tuesdays and on Thursdays on some of these topics. So definitely make sure you uh, take a look at our channel. Aaron, again, thanks for your help, and I hope all of you have a wonderful rest of your day, and happy fusioning.